Hi everybody, so if you're a regular follower of the channel, you know that we're working on the Darwin wind turbine. <laughs> the Darwin wind turbine is kind of funnels to direct the wind down, but it's a large project, so it'll take a while. And the thing is, I'm 3D printing quite a lot of it, and I can't decide half the time whether to 3D print it or hand build it, but so far, I've been 3D printing it, and some of these prints are days long, so we get on with other things while we're doing that, and of course investigate other effects that we happen to notice as we're building the Darwin wind turbine, and that's left to things like the, the new Tesla turbine that we're looking at, uh, we looked at rainwater turbines, all kinds of stuff, and that's kind of done in between the main project. So, I'm going to give you a bit of an update what we're doing and where we are, and how long roughly it'll take me to finish it. Well, that's about as long as a piece of string. We started this project with this thing here. What this is, is a Waters turbine. Now, there's lots of information about the performance of Waters turbines, but they're very interesting things. And we started this Waters turbine with the rotor attached to the turbine, because we're interested in speed at the rim as being the possibility of generation. So, We've got the waters turbine, and then connected to the waters turbine is this generator, which is here, and in there we've got a serpentine coil. Now, when it comes to looking at the performance of these things, you're basically looking at three different elements of it. The first one is the generator, and how well that will perform. The next one is the wind catcher, or this bit here, the turbine itself, and how well that will perform. And then remember the Darwin, which is basically like that, which is a load of parabolic cones, funnels, goes above it, the wind comes in this direction and gets directed down there. And that's a wind capture device. So we've got a wind capture, we've got a wind turbine, and we've got a generator all into this machine. And of course what we want to do is you want to know is, is any of the stuff we're doing making it any better, or are we just wasting our time? So of course we need to measure that to get an idea of how much better it's going to be. If we measure just the power out, well that's actually not telling us very much. Now I can understand that, you know, folks buy a turbine, it's got blades on it, it's got a generator, it's all attached, the wind blows and out comes the energy and you think that's the measure of it. Well it isn't really because of course we have three parts. If we measure what comes out, it's telling us about the whole machine but nothing about what might be wrong. We actually need to measure each bit so that we can get an idea of what it is that's actually performing well, and keep that bit, and what it is that might be performing badly, and throw that bit away. We don't really want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, we want to keep the good bits. Now I've got a reasonable amount of faith in this Waters turbine design because it's been well, ex um, well explored, it's been well tested, but how would you measure how well your wind capture device is doing? I mean, in, in this case, it's the waters, but of course, we can use propellers. In the Tesla, we're using cones or plates, but there's ways of telling how well just this bit is doing. Because the question is, what does this bit do? Well, this bit, of course, captures the wind and turns it into a rotational force, and that's what we want. We want rotation from the wind blowing on it, and of course to measure that rotation is to measure the torque. So we can measure the torque on the shaft that comes in or goes out of there, that the wind is blowing on this and making it turn. That torque measurement is an indication of how well this thing's actually doing. Clearly, if we generate more torque, that's better. And if we generate less torque, well, we need to rethink what it is. So the torque is what we want to measure when it comes to the wind capture device. Now, if we take the generator separately, this is a bit harder to see because it's actually integrated into the device. So let's say we use this as a generator and we had a propeller on there like that. In order to evaluate the propeller, we'd measure the torque produced from the propeller. In order to evaluate the generator, then we need to measure the power produced by the generator with that given torque. So measuring power, volts and amps, that only tells you really about the generator or about the whole combined device. It doesn't tell you anything at all about how well this is doing. It's telling you about the combined device and you're not really getting the information you need. What we need is information about torque. 
so this thing, what have I been printing? Well, first thing is a base for it all to stand on because obviously we need to make it so that it can have a stand and make it not move or blow away or we want to fix it to something etc etc. So I've got this ring and if I slot my generator into that ring, there we go, <laughs> gently obviously, I slot my generator into that ring then pop that on we go. It gives me a base. The reason I've done that is because this huge thing here, which took several days to print, is a um, part of the wind collector. It's basically a funnel. That funnel fits neatly into this ring here. There we go. And directs the wind down onto the water's turbine, which then gets blown out of the sides. So that bit goes on the top there to allow that to happen. There we go, just like that. So that's what we've got at the moment. Now obviously what we need to do is put the actual structure on top, which will look something like this, only bigger. And that will go on top there to finish the Darwin wind turbine. And it's this bit that I'm mulling over at the moment, which is why we've been looking at um, Tesla rotors, because I'm having a think about this. Now when I first did this, there was quite a few people who said that would never work. And of course, they've now put something very similar on the pier at Skegness. And there's a company producing this. The company is actually making everything go upwards, we're making everything go downwards. And we're more interested in it being downwards because it puts all the um, electrics, all the mechanism you might want to look at, at ground level or eye level, somewhere you can work on it without having to clamber up on the thing. And from our tests, it seems to work just fine. And that's where we are with this. We are. Got the shroud done, got the turbine done, got the generator done. We now need the wind collection structure. And as I say, I'm not sure if I'm going to print it or if I'm going to make it by hand out of flat panels. I really haven't decided. And of course, the obvious question is, is this doing any good? OK, mate. There we go. Okay, that's good, that's good. It's not the most impressive, but half a volt. Let's put the shroud on. And it jumps up to a volt. 1.1? <laughs> awesome! And it would take the shroud off. There you go, it slows down. Thank you, mate. That's all right. Okay, so a quick and dirty test, doing exactly what you think it would do, which is kind of cool to get that information, because of course the surface area here is about twice what the surface area was there, and it's been focused down onto the turbines. You would expect it to do better, and you'd expect it to be round about twice as good because it's round about twice the area that it's covering. So, no surprises there. And what we got showed that that was actually the case. So we know we're doing okay so far. Now, one of the reasons to measure volts is, if you remember, a generator is actually governed by the strength of the magnetic field, the length of the wire that goes through that magnetic field, and the angle that that wire makes and the speed at which it turns. Those four things, we're going to get a voltage figure out. Now, in this particular case, because we're using all the same stuff, three of those things are constant. Only the speed can change. That's the speed at which that rotates. It's the only difference we can make. If we're giving it more push, because there's more wind, and that wind is focused, it's going to go faster. If it goes faster, it's going to create a greater voltage and so we're able to say that that's actually doing better we're not measuring the torque directly we're just getting an impression of the torque by an increase in the speed because there's more wind pushing on it and that's the kind of guide I've been using now obviously what I really want to do is get a proper way of measuring the torque like a strain gauge or a prony brake or something where I can measure the torque directly but I don't have those things and so I'm using volts as a way of getting an estimate of is there an improvement in the torque and we're only looking 
at this section here. What's coming out of it makes no difference to us at this stage. We want to see an increase in voltage. What that voltage is really doesn't matter. We just want to see whether it increases or not when we make changes to this bit, which is the wind converter bit. This bit converts wind energy into rotational energy, and when we're working on this, that's what we're interested in. So just to drive this home, because it does seem to create some confusion, when we're measuring volts, we're not measuring generator output. We're using the volts measure as a way of measuring the speed of the rotor. We measure the speed of the rotor, then remember, power divided by speed, or RPM, is torque, so we can use it as a guide. But we are using volts to measure the speed, courtesy of BLV sine theta, we are not measuring the generator output, because at this stage, we don't care what the generator output is, because we can always bolt a normal generator to it. We're only interested in what the rotor is doing when we're designing rotors. Oh, I ought to mention this, meter readings. Uh, I did try to give you a view of the meter, but to be honest, most of the time it doesn't even matter, because I'm not trying to prove anything to you. Most of this stuff is actually uh, well researched and well documented and you can have a read and get the proof that way if you want. In fact, the only really different thing in this is the serpentine coil. So the meter reading barely matters. Most of the time I'm just explaining what I'm up to as opposed to trying to prove something. If you were trying to prove something, then sure, I'd be a bit more diligent. But I'm not. I'm just explaining what it is I'm up to. This bit is part of the wind collection system. So again, we're looking at this, if we add this and we get more push on this because we've added that, that's what we're interested in. What comes out of the generator, an absolute figure, at this stage, do not care. When it comes to measuring what the generator's doing, fantastic. If it turns out this generator that we've got here is rubbish, none of this has gone to waste. We can just buy a commercial generator and stick it in there instead of making our generator, we would then know still that this is improving, this is improving, this is improving. Maybe we made a mistake with the generator and we have to replace one bit. It doesn't matter what volts and amps come out. When we're looking at how well is the wind collection system doing, how well is the wind conversion part doing? That's what I've been looking at when I've been building this. So you can see I've done a large part of the wind collection system, which is that bit there. And that is the big machine that's been sitting on the back that several people have been asking about. That bit is a test bit. We're going to use that for our tester turbine. But it's actually a test bit to see how that section of the wind collection system will do. And of course, these are being actually done now. Uh, I can't remember who the company name is, but they're making these in sticking them all over the UK. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the update. I hope you explained a few things about what it is that I'm doing and why I do them. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.